Is stress making your patients and clients pelvic and sexual pain worse? Hi, I'm Jessica Drummond. I'm the founder of the Integrative Pelvic Health Institute. As a physical therapist and clinical nutritionist, I like to combine the science of these conservative methods with our body's innate healing wisdom to help our patients heal from their pelvic and sexual pain. Today we're going to talk about stress and how that is influencing their pelvic and sexual pain. First of all, as a practitioner, are you feeling stressed? You can't give from an empty well, and you have to be nice and in balance to be a good example to your patients. So don't forget that. You are your number one patient. And remember your own stress as we talk through today's science lesson. So your patients are probably struggling with the emotional stress of the holidays right now, the holiday season, beginning of the new year, the busyness of everything that comes along with modern life. So that's one piece of the puzzle, emotional stress. And it affects your body in the same way as physical stress, whether that's traveling across time zones, eating a lot of sugar, dealing with food sensitivities, or even exercising too much in the case of some of our patients and clients. So today I'm gonna to talk about hormone metabolism and how stress can actually influence pelvic and sexual pain on a hormonal level. So let's talk about this chart here. This is representation, a somewhat simplified rep representation of hormonal metabolism. So all hormones, steroid hormones, are built from cholesterol. So here's the first piece of the puzzle. I want you to make sure that your patients are eating enough healthy fat. They need that as building blocks. When we go on an extremely low fat diet, they don't even have the beginning of this tree that helps them to create healthy sex hormones needed for painless and enjoyable sex. All right, so cholesterol is the top of the puzzle. Then the top of the tree. Then there's pregnenolone. And from there, you divide this tree into stress hormones, cortisol is the big one, and sex hormones ending with different forms of estrogen and testosterone. Women need both estrogen and testosterone for healthy sexual function and healthy function throughout a lot of the rest of their body. All right, so if a person's body is under stress, do you think the priority evolutionarily would be for them to have sex? Probably not. The priority is to save them from whatever is going on that is causing the stress. So you can think of stress as um, a survival issue, whereas sex is secondary, of course, to survival. So if there's any time when the body is competing for resources, the stress side is always going to win. We call this the pregnenolone steal. So the body steals these, these resources, pregnenolone, and puts them through the metabolic pathway on this side, the stress side of the chain, where you get progesterone all the way down to cortisol. In fact, not even progesterone. It can jump past progesterone and go right to cortisol. So if your body is under stress, your patient's body is under stress, the system is going to steal that pregnenolone and prioritize making high, high levels of cortisol, which will show up in different symptoms, like things like adrenal fatigue, where they show up having difficulty falling asleep at night, but they have no energy in the morning. They might feel jittery, anxious, catch every cold and flu, their immune system seems weak. There are many symptoms of adrenal fatigue that are outside of the, uh, we'll talk about that in another video, but high levels of cortisol steal a woman's ability to make adequate amounts of estrogen and testosterone. If her testosterone levels are low, her sexual drive will really suffer. And if her estrogen levels are low, her tissues of her vagina are gonna be very fragile and weak. There will be much less moisture. So the bottom line today that I want you to take from this video is I want you to be sure to be speaking to your patients and clients about the effects of stress on their pelvic and sexual pain and be addressing both emotional stress, 
you know, is the fact that they're struggling with their sex life contributing to the problem, making it even worse? And physical stress, how much sugar are they eating? Do they, does their job require that they travel across time zones quite a bit? Are they getting enough sleep? So when you talk about both physical and emotional stress and do things to mitigate that stress, you can take the resources and push them over to the side that will help them make healthier sex hormones. Thanks so much for being here today and your attention. And I would love it if you would answer two questions for me below in the comments. Number one is what did you learn today? Was this something new for you in your practice? And two, how will you take this information into the clinic and help your patients who are dealing with day-to-day -day modern life stress, holiday stress, any other kind of stress, and help them to mitigate that stress so that they can have more appropriate and normal levels of sex hormones. Again, I'm Jessica Drummond. Thanks so much for being here today. See you next time.